was very, very young. Um, my, mo my father actually built a walk-in closet into an art studio for my mother. And my mother pulled out this little object. And I was fascinated with it. She put uh, uh, paint in it, and then she blew it onto a canvas, and that was an airbrush. And that's how she airbrushed her canvases. And I was so fascinated with this airbrush that I played with that thing for years. I manipulated the paint like she did when she painted these beautiful paintings. I think that's when I really got the bug and I wanted to be an artist. I am a self-taught artist. You know, I taught myself how to braise and taught myself how to weld. And, uh, but I've always been one of these people that can pick up a book and read the book and actually produce what comes out of the book, like making jewelry and stuff. So that's how I'm usually I, I worked it. But um, before I used to go across the street from my house at Orleans Roofing and uh, pick up uh, sheet metal and um, rivet it all together and make all these sculptures, these wonderful sculptures, until I really actually learned how to weld and stuff. And then I found out that this is not the kind of metal I was supposed to be using for welding. So I had to buy real metal to do sculptures. And from there, I started making really cool sculptures. Painting came uh, later on in my life. Um, I started uh, painting um, just a few years back. And one of the hardest things to do when you paint is this white canvas staring at you. And once you get that first brush stroke on there and you start painting it, then everything else flows. It's really wonderful. One day, Em and I were at a crawfish boil, and she was very young, and we found a little blue crawfish, and we took him home, put him in the aquarium, and from there, uh, it eventually passed away, and so I painted a little painting for my daughter, and I named it Boudreaux Blue, two words, and 13 years later, um, you know, after giving her this painting, uh, she um, was painting up here in the studio with me, and she said to me, Poppy, paint me a Boudreaux, and I said, who's Boudreaux? What, how do, how do you... Is that in French or is that in English? And we kind of spelt it together and, and we came up with this little wonderful little blue crawfish character and we've trademarked and copyrighted it and we have painted it since and we've sold a lot of paintings and a lot of the money goes towards keeping the studio working. We've always men mentored artists in our studio. We usually take around two artists a year and we have taught them pretty much anything that we can teach them. Uh, and a lot of them go off and open galleries and, and their own shops. And we have this wonderful program to where any of these artists can actually come back to the studio and work and uh, produce any big sculpture they want at the studio. If their studio is too small, they come back to us and we help them, you know, produce a piece. And we have around 30 to 40 or 50 or 60, you know, uh, artists out there that we have mentored and, and gotten out of our program. It's really wonderful when you have this uh, young artist that comes to you and you're mentoring him and he's doing these wonderful things and then all of a sudden you say to him, oh my God, you can't weld that because, you know, that's, that's not doable. And all of a sudden he welds it and you go, oh my, how did he do that? And it's, it's wonderful because I learn from these kids, you know, that are, I'm teaching and they teach me as much as I teach them. It's a really wonderful thing. Well, New Orleans is one of those funny places in the world that you can go into a bar or a restaurant and see a wall that is crumbling and funky and wonderful. And then you say to yourself, wow, that's the color I need in my new painting. Or sometimes you say, oh, that's the, what I want to use on a prop because it's flaky and it's wonderful. And then you see all these lights and chandeliers and different fixtures and all those things influence people's art. And when you go into these places, you get an inspiration from all those objects and from the broken tile floors to the old chandelier that only has one light bulb in it. And you'd look at it and say, that's art. That's the piece that's been here for over 100 years. It's a piece of the whole New Orleans feel, and that's just incredible. <laughs>